Well, let's get him. Let's try this look down fish next. Get up here. Oh, get up here. Oh, get up here. No. Oh. All right, Holly fam. Welcome back to another episode. Welcome to the channel. If you're a first time viewer, my name is Rich, and we just launched the boat here at uh, Sand Sprit Park here in Stewart, Florida. And uh, unfortunately, it's a little after 8 a.m. right now, so kind of a late start. But uh, I was actually here at the ramp had the boat on like literally in the water at seven right around sunrise but then i hopped in the boat and i realized i forgot my garmin and my lawrence uh, fish finder screen so then i had to go all the way back home which was like 30 minutes and of course uh, got caught behind uh, the train tracks like to cut across to get home and then i drove the 30 minutes back so a little bit of a later start but that's the way it goes sometimes. I really have to uh, listen to what my dad says sometimes, and that is uh, make a list, or I just need to have the screens always at the front door because this isn't the first time that I've forgotten them before. But anyway, we're gonna start heading towards the inlet, and on our way there, I might stop to see if I can toss the cast net and maybe get some greenies or some mullets. And um, hopefully we do get some, uh, but if not, or even if we do, I'll, I'll probably drop the sabiki rig out in the ocean to see if we can get maybe like some blue runners or some little jacks or some sardines, thread fins. And the primary goal for today is to go out and try and bottom fish mostly for like grouper and snapper. And then maybe as the day progresses uh, on our way back in, we'll stop on in the inside here in the inside and see if we can get some snook or uh, jack curval and uh, just have an enjoyable day out here, so stay tuned and hopefully we catch some fish. Let's do it. Look at that primo bait right there. And now, as you can see, uh, we got plenty of greenies, probably like a hundred, you know, more, a couple hundred. And that seems like what the most amount of bait is, that is here right now. But I kind of want to throw the net one more time right in this area and see if we, we can spot any mullets. And check this out. If you see all the ripples right here, that's all bait right there. Just a massive dark cloud of it. That whole area. That's why bait is so easy to catch right now because there's so much of it around. This next net pull, I'm just gonna put in the cooler so we have a bunch of dead baits. All right, well, we got a bunch of great smaller baits, which will work for smaller grouper, smaller snapper. And I was really hoping there'd be a ton of mullet in here that we could catch because I feel like if we could get like some 10 inch mullet and butterfly that, that would probably be really, really good for larger snapper or larger grouper. But since I'm not seeing any and I don't, don't want to waste any more time, we're just going to head out into the ocean. I'll, I'll drop a sabiki on a buoy and maybe hit a couple wrecks on our way out to our furthest spot and see if we can get some like jacks of you know multiple different types of species of jacks and uh, blue runners and i think those will be better baits for the larger fish so let's get out there See what's on this buoy here just a couple days ago there were a ton of little jack species here and some blue runners all right i got a brand new sabiki here that i'm going to tie on I got something. Oh, 
Oh, look at that. A couple little sharks followed these uh, thorn valleys up. I'm actually not gonna keep these guys as live bait. I'm just gonna keep them as dead bait. So I just saw some bonita popping right behind the boat. Oh my God, guys, check this out. Look at all these little sharks. There's a ton of them. I've never seen a, a school of uh, the, I guess these, are, these look like little uh, black tip sharks now that I'm looking at the fins. Oh, look at that. A little look down fish. This will make great bait too. I'll check it out. These black tips are still cruising all around me. And you know what? I think I'm gonna catch one just for fun. Like, <laughs> I don't think I've ever had a school of baby black tip sharks around me like this. I got a little bit of wire here. And I'm gonna grab a small circle hook. I'm gonna crush the barb on the circle hook so I can get it out nice and easy. Now I'm just gonna cut off about like two feet of wire. Do a little haywire twist around the circle hook. I'm gonna do another little haywire twist around a barrel swivel. I'm gonna cut off just the head of one of these thorn bellies. And I think that'll work. That was easy. Nice. <laughs> so cool. Woo, he's going crazy. Oh no, that head. No, no, no. Oh, we almost got cut off right there because the head slid up the line and another black tip tried to grab it. Got him. Whew. All right, just taking a short break from the action to give a huge shout out to today's video sponsor, Tide Chasers. And if you're looking for an awesome jacket for snarky weather or some awesome bibs here. All you have to do is uh, check out the link in the description and use my code to uh, save on your entire order. And on top of these great items, they also have a lot of really awesome like dry fit long sleeve tees like this one that I'm rocking right here. And this has a cool design on it. It has a striped bass eating uh, a bluefish, the bluefish eating a fluke, the fluke eating a porgy, and the porgy eating a squid. And I actually had a little input on this design. And they have a lot of other really nice sweatshirts up on their site, as well as t-shirts, and also uh, some bamboo long sleeve tee uh, hoodies, which are really, really nice. So again, link down in the description and a code so you can save on your entire order. And by supporting Tide Chasers, you also help support uh, this channel. So uh, check them out if uh, you have the time. Now let's get back to the action. All right, I'm gonna try and unhook them in the net. There you go, hook is out. All right, look at that cute little baby shark. So innocent. Nice uh, set of teeth on her. Let's get her back. Alright, we're at our next spot where we're gonna 
catch hopefully some blue runners as bait or vanita. All right, 20, 25 pound fluoro leader should work well. So on this bait rod, I'm using 15 pound braid and I'm gonna tie directly to the barrel swivel with this braid. And generally when I'm doing that, I prefer to use a polymer knot. Wet it a little bit and I find the polymer knot to be the strongest like direct tie with braid that you could possibly use. And you can also do like a double single uni knot, basically like doubling up the braid and then just tying a single uni but doubled up to uh, the swivel that works as well or a double clinch you know they all work as long as it's like a double connection i find it to be the best perfect i had a dead bait just chilling right in the back here Whoa, there's a good fish. That might be a runner. Hopefully I can get him up. Oh, no way. Or a really nice mangrove. Look at that. Whew. Let's see how big he is. Oh gosh, almost lost them. 15, 16, 17, 18 inch mangrove. So cool and delicious. Perfect. Got eight. There he is. Nice. Not as big as that first one, but still a decent keeper. Hey guys, I have a whole nother bag of ice right here. <coughs> All right, let's send down another bait. And I'm actually having really fun doing this because this is kind of a surprise mangrove snapper bite here. I've actually never caught a mangrove snapper on this exact spot. I've only ever caught blue runners. Oh, there's another fish. Oh, look at this creepy looking fish. It's probably best not to touch him. So I'm going to use my boga grip as a D hooker to just plop him off like that. Oh, there's another one. another one. Oh, wow. This one's pretty small, like maybe just barely a keeper. I can see that this guy is full of air, so I'm going to try my new defizzing tool to empty its uh, swim bladder. And then I'm probably just going to release this guy. Let's 
see it. Oh, we got something decent here. There we go. We finally got a blue runner. And actually I put the live scope in the water so I could find some more of the, the smaller fish that are here on this reef. And it worked out because the uh, snapper bite also died off here. So I'm gonna try and just catch maybe a dozen blue runners so we can use them as cut bait for larger snapper and grouper at another spot. So if you guys look on the live scope here, it's kind of cool. That right there, that big long object, that's a shark. And then all of those smaller specks are bait fish or probably mostly blue runners. All right, well, we got plenty of baits now. We're gonna head out to about like 140 feet of water and I'm probably gonna try dropping down some of the larger baits on the dark matter HK. Boat rods here, paired up with the Abbott HXW 5.2, and that has 80 pound braid on and 100 pound leader. So I'm hoping that'll be enough to pull up some big grouper that potentially could be at our next spot. <laughs> uh, I lost my balance there for a sec, but yeah, we'll see you there. To start at the spot, let's try this little blue runner here. A couple days ago, making um, chunks like that worked really well. And we had a lot of bites, but not a lot of success. So hopefully that'll be different today. Oh, I got hit by something good here. Based on how it's fighting, it could just be a shark and not a grouper. Whew. Oh man, now it's pulling. Now it's pulling pretty good. This is a big fish here. All right, we got color now. And, huh, it's a shark, no. I don't know why it was so hard to reel up though. It's not like it's that big of a shark. There we go. This fish basically just fought like dead weight for most of this fight. Like for a second, I was thinking I even, maybe I, did, did I hook like an anchor rope or something? Like look how docile the shark is. He's not that frisky. Uh. 
All right, there he is. I don't have my D hooker with me. And since I'm all alone, I'm just gonna try and break it off or, or cut it off as close as I can to the hook. That hook will rust out of that fish in a couple weeks, probably. Dang, son. Let's get him. Let's try this look down fish next. Get up here. Oh. Get up here. No. Oh. Oh. oh no. Well, that was a grouper. And my drag was locked down. And that fish was still dumping line. And if you look at the leader here, that fish just probably got right around a piece of coral rock down there and sliced a hundred pound like butter. So I'm gonna try a lighter setup now, just for at least a few minutes to see if maybe I can get a, at least a smaller grouper here. I still have an 80 pound fluorocarbon leader on here and I'm using 40 pound main braid. Oh, I got something good here. Oh, I lost them. Back to the big guns. Oh, there's a good bite. There he is. Oh. 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 He's already got me in the structure. Dang it. I'm gonna try lightening up on him. Maybe he'll swim out on his own. Oh. They get you in the structure so quick. It's just crazy. Hmm, something feels a little different. This fish is really in there. Lost them. All right, Fishaholics. Unfortunately, I think that's gonna be about a wrap. And look at that gorgeous sunset right there. And I gave him my all. I fished my heart out today. And it's unfortunate that at this uh, second spot in, in like 140 feet of water, that um, you know, I just could not successfully pull up the two, or maybe, or, yeah, two big fish that I had on, uh, except for the shark. I got that one up, of course, which that was kind of surprising because I didn't have any wire on. But maybe I'll, I'll have to hit this spot at night, and maybe it'll be a little bit better. 
uh, maybe the fish will come up higher from the structure and then if you get the bite up higher then you have a little bit more room to play so that you can pull them up before they get to the structure to uh, break you off and if you guys saw my video from a little while ago when i was out with my buddy uh rafael uh, we were actually on this spot he showed me this spot and we had like the same kind of occurrence uh, we lost a lot of big fish to the bottom and i i got two grouper up one was like a rock hind grouper and that was delicious by the way and then i lo it looked like i had a small gag that or scamp that i brought up but it got cut in half by a cuda which was unfortunate so other than that it's you know been really tough at this spot but anyway i hope you guys still enjoy this video it was a really nice day out here and uh, if you did please smash the like button to make my day hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for more and like always live to fish fish to live